Hi everybody, Texpex here. Thanks for joining me for another video. Today we're going to take a look at some different 22 long rifle self-defense uh, loadings. Now for those of you who have watched many of my videos, you know normally I do my shooting out on some properties that I have access to, but unfortunately due to family obligations, kids uh, sport tournaments, and other things of that sort, I have been unable to get away almost any weekend for a couple of months. And this was my first weekend I was going to be able to get away, and unfortunately the weather turned and it's been cold and raining and windy. And I actually very much enjoy the cold, the wind, and the rain, but it's obviously not optimal conditions to go out and do shooting and, and try to, to take some video while I do that. So I decided I would head to the indoor shooting range that I've used here recently for a couple of my videos and try a couple of small videos. One dealing with these 22 self-defense ammunitions that I, that I purchased. Now, 22 long rifle, obviously, it's been used for self-defense for many, many years. Even in my youth, I remember a friend of mine who lived in a small ranch outside of Laredo, which is very close to the border. His mother had a snub-nosed Smith & Wesson 22 long rifle that she kept next to her bed that out there in the middle of nowhere could be very useful to deal with any four-legged little critters or predators that tried to come up on the property, uh, but obviously to maybe scare away some of the two-legged variety as well. So, you know, 22 long rifle being a self-defense ammunition is nothing new. But recently, there seem to be more offerings as far as not only firearms, but different type of ammunition specifically meant for self-defense. Now, obviously, if you have a revolver, such as the Ruger LCR or one of the Smith & Wesson's or other 22 long rifle little revolvers that people use for self-defense, your firearm may not be that picky about the type of ammunition it shoots. Uh, with a revolver, the good thing is that if you have one round that doesn't go off, you can pull the trigger again, or if it's a single action, cock the hammer again and get to the next round. The only issue at that point is maybe trying to find ammunition that works consistently in your firearm and that also maybe groups accurately. Since we all know 22 is infamously finicky and picky about what type of ammunition does well in which firearm. Now, recently, there's also a lot of new small semi-automatics featured in 22 long rifle meant, meant for self-defense. A lot of the larger companies make smaller 22 long rifle versions of their popular self-defense semi-autos for training purposes and, and for some people who want to shoot a smaller caliber. Obviously, the Beretta 21A has been around a long time, and that's a pocket pistol that, that many people have used. And things like the LCP Max in 22 long rifles is a very new offering that some people will use as a self-defense pistol. So since these new loadies have come out, uh, there's this, what is this, Federal Premium Punch. It's a 29 grain, uh, what does it say here? Flat nose, so it's a flat nose bullet. It's really hard to see inside of this casing, but we'll take a look at them when we take them to the range. There's also these Winchester Silver Tips. These are a 37 grain plated. They are segmented hollow point. Optimal for handguns, it claims. So we will we will put that to the test. And of course, an old classic, the Stinger 22 uh, long rifles. I, I've had problems with Stingers and some pistols in the past. I think the casing may be a little longer than your standard 22 long rifle. Maybe not. Maybe it's just the shape of the projectile. But we'll see. What I want to see is how these three different ammunitions work in my two semi-automatics here. Just to see if they function well, if they, if they cycle reliably. So we're going to shoot it out of this Beretta 21A and this Beretta 87 Cheetah. So not much more to say. I don't want to make this intro too long. I usually spend way too much time yammering before we go out shooting. So let's head out there. Uh, we'll try all three of these through both pistols at five, maybe seven yards. See how well they group and see if they cycle reliably and consistently out of both pistols. So let's go ahead and head out and do some shooting. And here we are at the range. I've got the pistols set up. We're going to shoot them in this order, the Federal Punch and the Winchester Silver Tip, and then we're going to go for the CCI Stingers. We're going to set them at those shoot and see targets, and I'm putting it out to five yards. So we start out with the Federal Punch. I load six rounds into the magazine, plus one directly into the barrel for the 21 and then eight into the magazine for the 87. That is the nice thing about the 21, that you can put one directly into the barrel. Makes it easier to load and unload uh, without having to cycle the slide. And for somebody with, you know, problems with their hands or, or weak hands for some reason, that can make it very, very easy. So I fire the first round. And it does not load a second. 
It's either I pull it again because the 21A does have second strike ability, but it does not fire. I double check the magazine. It looked like the following round was maybe nose diving a little bit, so I tap it, put the magazine back in, and then I end up cycling the action. So now I have the six remaining rounds from the magazine. They all fire without a problem. Now both of these pistols were cleaned prior to this test. I don't clean them between the ammunitions. So the winch, uh, excuse me, the Federal Punch had the first uh, rounds out of both pistols. Here I do a slow-mo. You can see that when it fires, it does eject the round, but it seems to eject it slightly to the front, to the left and to the front. And later on, when I fire more rounds through it, you will see that typically it, uh, here I put five more rounds through it because I just want to check and I'm going to put one directly into the barrel again because I want to see if it will have that malfunction again. And it fires them fine. And here you can see that it ejects them to the rear, either slightly to the right or slightly but to the left, just kind of to the rear. So I don't know, that first round was just maybe my chamber had a little bit of oil. I don't tend to leave oils inside of the chamber, you never know. But after that, it fired them without an issue. Then we move on to the Beretta 87. The Cheetah is such a great pistol. It's so much fun with these self-defense animals. They seem to have a little more kick. Now right there, you can see, have an issue with it. First round again, clean gun. And then the slow-mo, you can see it fires. However, it does not work the full slide back and does not eject the round. So I have to cycle the action. And once I cycle the action, that seems to take care of the problem. There should be seven more rounds in the magazine. I fire them off. No problems. Fires the rest without an issue. I decide to put five more rounds through the 87. See if I could repeat that problem, but nope, once again, fires all five, no issue. You can see that uh, little belts fire. Bring the target back to take a look, and it does well. I mean, it does about the same out of both, which is surprising because the Beretta 21A has a tiny blade front sight, and it's black. And in that indoor range, I was having issues finding my front sight when aiming it at the black background. That's my fault. So once again, I'm putting six in the magazine, one in the barrel, and then eight in the magazine for the 87. This time we're using the Winchester. It's a segmented self-defense ammo. Once again, five yards. That's my fault. I should have thought of different targets for uh, the 21, but at this point I had committed to the shoot and seize in this video. So once again, six rounds in the magazine, one directly in the barrel. The Winchester silver tip. And if you play close attention, you can see that occasionally I'll lift my arms up a little bit because I end up looking for the white background on the larger target to find that tiny blade front sight. Then I bring it back down on target and fire my round. Uh, but that being said, I think I was half aiming, half pointing. And uh, for, for that, at five yards, it was fine. And it fired all the rounds, all seven rounds, no issue. the 8-round magazine into the Breda 87 Cheetah. It fires all 8 rounds without an issue. I decided to bring the target to take a look at it and you can see I'm actually hitting a little better with the Winchester silver tip especially out of the 87. The 87 is grouping them real nice most of them in the center ring and the 21A if I could <laughs> I could I should have painted my front side uh, but yeah the Winchester silver tip is doing great but yeah maybe a little paint on that front side would have helped for this particular target but I decided to put another magazine through both, put it back to five yards. We are still shooting the Winchester Silver Tip. So six rounds in the magazine, one round directly into the chamber. Yeah, you can see I lift my hands there to 
to find the front sight. Do it again there. <laughs> but after one or two rounds, I, I can't really see it. I try it again right there again. You see me keep lifting it. Really, I'm, I'm barely seeing it. So it fires all the rounds. No issues. And then another magazine of eight rounds. The Winchester silver tip into the 87. And although it fired the first magazine without an issue, on the second magazine, first round, same thing. Failure to eject, just like the punch. Work the slide back, load the next round, and the rest shoot fine. All remaining seven rounds come out without an issue. And I do really well with the Samurai. I like the silver tip as far as how accurate it is out of both of these pistols. It's certainly one I would recommend. I just have to... Yeah, you can see one ragged hole in the center there. It, a lot of my rounds hit right dead center. So I do a slow-mo again of that failure. You can see it fire it. Once again, the slide does not completely go back. It doesn't actuate much. So it fires it, but does not eject. And then last but not least, the CCI Stingers. Very popular ammo that's probably been used as self-defense ammo for for decades. <laughs> I don't, it's not advertised as self-defense ammo, but I'm pretty sure people have been using it that way for a long time. So, right here I'm trying to remind myself on the video that I'm having issues with that front sight, seeing it against that target background. So I put one directly into the barrel, or into the chamber, excuse me, put in the magazine with six rounds. Is it just me, or does the report and belt fire look a little bit bigger? It's actually really pretty. It looks like uh, starbursts. We could get poetic, say, you know, belt fires are like snowflakes. Each one's just a little bit different. They're all unique. So it fires them all without a problem. And then eight rounds through the 87. Spoiler alert, it shoots them all fine as well. And once again, it does seem like the belt fire is a little bigger on the steamers. It is a, a lighter projectile. I think it's the lightest of the group. It's only 30-some grains compared to the other two. Bring the target back just to see how my first rounds did. Not bad, once again. I mean, I can barely aim with that 21A. And with the 87 that has actual decent sights, I'm hitting right on target, so... Doing great for both. The Stinger's doing well, no issues at all. But, like all the other ammos, I decided to put in a second magazine. This time I don't think I put one directly into the barrel. No, I don't, so it's just six rounds in the magazine, and I load it by pulling back the slide. Yeah, I keep looking for that front sight. Fires all six rounds, no issue. Then the eight round magazine into the 87. The 87 is one of my favorite pistols. Look at those pretty belch fires. But it fires every single round without a problem. In fact, the uh, CCI was the only one that came out completely unscathed. But as anyone who shoots a lot of 22 long rifle knows, a 22 long rifle is finicky, so that's why you need to test different types of ammo. And, and the targets did well. They were both very accurate, especially the 21A, considering that I was barely aiming. It was mostly sort of something somewhere between pointing and aiming. Uh, but both did well. But the lesson, as always, with a 22 long rifle, if you have a semi-auto that you're going to carry as self-defense, make sure to test some different rounds through it. Make sure they function flawlessly, that you get many rounds through there without a problem and that way you can trust your life to it. But anyway, it was a fun video as always. I appreciate you all watching, and I will see you in the next video.